Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Cartoon Clearance with Meg and Dan. I'm Meg. And I'm Dan. And we sprinkled some stardust on our ramble pants today. Got them all glitzed up a bit. I bedazzled mine. In honor of our topic for discussion, which is the 2015 movie The Little Prince. Danny, would you like to give us some background? Of course. The Little Prince, for those who are not aware, is actually a novella written by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever. And the film was directed and pitched by Mark Osborne, who you might know uh, from the Kung Fu Panda movies. And I think he also worked on Box Trolls. Osborne apparently had a suitcase made that had all these contraptions and strange visuals that would come out to pitch the movie to actors, executives, anyone he wanted on his team, pretty much. Very fascinating way to pitch a movie. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. The film makes use of both computer-generated animation and stop-motion animation, and I found out that the decision to make the main character of the film a girl came from Osborne's takeaway from this program put on by the actress Gina Davis. You might know her as the mom from Stuart Little and the bride from Beetlejuice. The film debuted at the Cannes Film Festival in May of 2015 and was released in France that July. Over the course of that year, it was released in the United Kingdom, New Zealand, Australia, Japan, Germany. The film was intended to be released in the United States in 2016, but Paramount Pictures pulled it a week from its release and did not give a reason why. How strange of a studio to meddle with the film. I digress. <laughs> Netflix acquired the rights to the film and released it on August 5th. It has pretty uh, positive reviews, according to Rotten Tomatoes. I think it's a 92% there. That's IMDb, pretty positive. I think has a 7 out of 10, about a uh, pretty highly regarded movie. Oh, and one little fun fact. I read that this was Rachel McAdams' first voice uh, role. She's a pretty prominent actress, but this was her first ever animated voice actor role. And what character was, was she? She was the mother. Okay. Meg, would you like to give us a little summary of La Petite Prince, as my mom would say? Yeah, sure. So the, the world is super gray and grid-like and corporate, pretty much like it was overtaken by the pixies from Fairly Odd Parents. And you have the main character, who's a little girl, and her mom who move houses so that the girl can get into the school district of the prestigious Worth Academy. Worth Academy. Worth Academy. So the mom has her daughter's entire life plan kind of mapped out on a cork board, but the kooky old man next door kind of throws a rut or a plane propeller, as the case may be, into those plans with a literal plane propeller that he kind of sends exploding through their wall by accident. Luckily, no one was hurt. The little girl is enthralled by the old man's stories about the adventures of a little space boy known as the Little Prince, and the two become pretty fast friends. But the old man is old, and he talks about reuniting with the prince and leaving the little girl behind. She's pretty upset about this. But the old man collapses and is rushed to the hospital and the girl kind of embarks on her own adventure through the stars to find the prince and in uh, she doesn't find quite what she expected she finds a very unhappy adultified version of the prince along with other characters from the story and she's kind of tasked with restoring his childhood innocence and along the way she comes to terms with losing loved ones and manages to accept that although people may be gone They'll be in her heart, no matter what they say. There's some kind of Phil Collins song I could sing right now, but I, I don't know the words. Y you'll be in my heart. That's something like that. Something like that. I also don't want to get copyright strike. But, oh, yeah. yeah. So what did you think of this movie, Daniel? I was really looking forward to this movie because I, I've never read the book of The Little Prince, but I sort of absorbed it through everyone else that I knew. My mom read it and loved it. People in my high school for French class had to read it. I think for AP French class, rather. And people would talk about how interesting this book was. And overall, I was actually a little disappointed from it because I was mm -hmm. hoping for a movie that would be more focused on the prince. I was okay that there was this other story about a little girl and an old man, but I was hoping that would be the B story. 
and the little prince would be the A story, but it was the reverse. Right. Uh, but I could let that slide because it it, it could have worked out well. Overall, I wasn't really that impressed with the whole movie with the little girl story. And if there were scenes that felt awkward to me, I don't think it was bad, but it just didn't like gel for me. Right. You know what I mean? (laughs) I know what you mean. I, I definitely agree that parts of it seemed a little awkward. I've never read The Little Prince either, but I I did hear other people talk about how much they loved it. I never heard specifics enough to really have any expectations for the story of The Little Prince within this movie. And from the trailer, it was pretty obvious that the little girl's story was going to be very prominent. However, I do think that the fact that the entire world was this super corporate no yeah. fun, serious business type of thing felt really heavy handed to me, unnecessarily so. Like from the trailer, I got that there was going to be a lot of micromanaging and, you know, like over control of the little girl's schedule from the mom. And I think it would have been better if it were just her because, you know, right. they went yeah. really heavy on the themes of don't let adulthood turn you into like, a boring gray slate like everyone else and they really really hammered that feeling in through the whole first 15 minutes so by the end of that first 15 minutes i was kind of like okay i get it already yeah you don't have to you don't have to just sledgehammer that into my face so hard yeah it was very extreme from like you said from the get-go you have the kid trying to get into worth academy and it's all gray there are posters it was, it was, what are you going to be when you grow up? There you Essential. go. Yeah. Essential. And it's not that that's bad, but I think... Well, yeah, I mean, the job of cartoons is to exaggerate yeah. things. But, but it this... just didn't, like, it didn't feel like an actual real world. Not to say, like, it should have been a real world, but I just wasn't on board with it because everyone was so stuck Uptight. up. And people, people in real life are, but the thing is, not everyone lives in the same houses like yeah. that not everyone like everyone is a, like is sort of like when they grow up like they have these things but everyone just was too the same it would be interesting to have different versions of stuck up adult no nonsense right if things were a little but i think that's a minor nitpick but it was i think very extreme yeah and if it just focused on the mom or just the parents in general it would have been a lot better mm-hmm. i think because they have this thing thrown in at one point about how the dad's not there. And at first I think it's through, uh, the girl looks at a snow globe and it's from dad. And it's like, Oh, okay. That's our first little inkling that dad's not here. You know, dad's not there because it's just the mom and the girl, but it's never brought up. And then in one scene, you see these snow globes that are all the same. And the dad sends very similar looking snow globes every year for this girl's birthday. And I thought that was a really nice little, yeah, touch and then at one point the girl kind of like lashes out at the mom about how she's like her dad and i thought though it was a good thing to call out the girl didn't ever show signs of feeling like she's being neglected or that she hates the mom she does well she does it she seems like she's having fun studying and like i mean except when she passes out but it's like no well i don't i don't know if i agree with that Because, yes, it's true that she was very accepting of her situation. Yeah. But to me, like, if you look at her animation and her expressions, for example, as the mom is showing her this whole massive corkboard with every second of every minute of every hour of every day planned out to the T, she does not look very happy about it. She looks overwhelmed. She looks confused. To me, it read a lot more as her kind of accepting it and doing her best to yeah. help out her mom because that's how she's been brought up. That's the yeah, kind of society but... she's being raised into, but she yeah. never seems comfortable with it. I don't know. She does to me. I I think it would have been a little bit more effective if she had a bit more of a reluctant, not self-assured attitude about it all. Right. Because there are, like you said, there are scenes where she looks overwhelmed, but then mm-hmm. she's really into it. And then there are scenes where she doesn't look very happy about what's going on and then you have scenes where she's like yeah let's do this i want to get into the worth academy i thought i was hoping at one point the girl was gonna say maybe i don't want to go to the worth academy and then the mom was gonna say what 
this is your life and in the end they still do and i thought that was really i don't know i think that's just a personal thing right and there are good stuff about this movie and i think one of the best things are the choices in the voice cast i read that jeff bridges who plays the old man was mark osborne's first pick He's like, I knew Jeff Bridges was going to play this old man. Everyone else I had to sort of look around, but Jeff Bridges had to be the old guy. And he mm. really is, I think, the best character of the film because he he's funny. I don't know if we've ever talked about it on this show before, but a comic relief character who has more to them than just comic relief. Right. And the old man is not a comic relief character, but he does do a lot of silly things. Yes. And funny things, but he also has a heart. And there are little things that I really enjoyed, like when he kind of yanks his propeller back into his backyard as he's leaving he sort of grabs onto a pot and slides it in front of the the like the giant hole he made he's like there we no, go. No, no nobody will notice yeah i'm like oh okay or how he he gets dressed up when the policeman comes to the door he's like oh hello sir i was i was just, just having um, a game r- of, of bridge bridge and then like his monocle flies out of his eye and it's slowly yeah. unraveling and everyone's like i'm not buying it like, yeah. there were nice little comedic scenes in there that I really enjoyed. Or, like, the, of the way the characters moved, to in, in this uh, 3D world, the 3D animation segments, at least. The 2D wasn't very, like... There weren't many, like, standout comedy scenes, I'd say, except for when the little prince talks to the conceited man, yeah. the king, and the businessman. But it, it, there were a lot of funny scenes. Like, he pulls out a bologna sandwich, and the way he wiggles it, and, like, you can hear the bologna, like, be like... Oh, I God. love it. <laughs> like, I got baloney. <laughs> it was really funny. Like, the writing for him was really good. And yeah. when he got sincere, it was nice without being, like, heavy-handed. Yeah. I- a lot of the actors were good. I kind of didn't really like the boy who played the prince. Yeah, he sounded really stilted. And there's not a really good way of saying this, but it's like... I've heard a lot of different people say kids can't really act because the only roles they're ever asked to play is a kid (laughs) so they just play a kid and because they're being told you have to act like a kid they just don't they get confused a lot of the times so this kid sort of sounded like he was in his own world he reminded me of the boy in the anchorman 2 movie and i and that that was done intentionally in the anchorman movie but this kid sort of felt like he was in his own world. And then I read that it was Mark Osborne's son, I believe. Oh, boy. And it's not that it was nepotism at first, but I think they auditioned a bunch of other kids and they didn't like their performances. And everyone on the crew was like, we all agreed that Mark's son did the best job and he was truly the prince because he recorded it first, so we all got used to it. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. But this kid is not a very good voice actor. Not to make, you know, not to put down his dreams or anything, but I didn't like his delivery of the lines. It's not, like, particularly noteworthy. No, it it definitely felt really flat. Kind of. It's kind of (laughs) bad. But I don't mean to pick on a little kid. Uh, There were a lot of great other actors. And and speaking of the prince, the scenes that the prince were in, I sort of wanted to like those a lot because that's what I wanted the movie to be. But those scenes felt a little bit rushed, too. Right. Yeah, you had the scenes kind of interspersed in short pieces throughout the course of the movie. And I'd be okay with that, but it's like they crammed pretty much everything that happens in The Little Prince's story into those scenes. Which makes sense because the girl is reading these stories one by one, the the pages one by one. But it felt too quick. Like the scene between The Little Prince and the fox who he befriends was very quick. Because at first the fox is like, I do not trust humans. Because if I make a friend, then I'll be tame. And then I will not be wild anymore. Something, something, He says something to the effect of that. And then the prince is like, but if you're tame, you'll like me. Right? And then the fox is like, yes. And then they become friends. I'm like, yeah. wait, whoa, whoa. I'm, I, what? Yeah. <laughs> and then I... like five minutes later, they leave. Or not even five minutes later. They just kind of separate at some point. Yeah. So I was kind of let down by that too. And I, I don't know. When you get to the midway point, to me, it felt like a, the movie was going to come to an end. And I looked at the time and I said, oh, there's still another hour. And then the second half sort of came out of nowhere for me. Yeah. So it was kind of, I actually kind of liked it, but I don't think it was great. I didn't really like that second chunk of the movie, I guess, because it did. It felt so, it felt like such a shift in the tone of it, because for the whole story, 
we've been hearing the old man tell the story of the little prince to the little girl as a story. And yeah, he says something miraculous happened and I met the little prince and I know he's out there. But to me, it was always, that was always in a really metaphorical sense. Yeah. And so for the little girl to suddenly go and be like, oh yeah, and now this beat up old plane works and I'm flying around through the stars and I'm meeting all of these characters straight out of the story. It really threw me off, even though my interpretation of it the whole way through was you hit your head really hard. So clearly this is like a fever dream. And I'm really glad that the movie yeah. didn't pull some bullshit like, oh, by the way, this is actually really happening. Because well, I mean, I'm standing you... by, I'm standing by that interpretation that it was a fever dream. And I think it makes more sense that way because earlier she was arguing with the old man, like she was really upset about the ending of the story that the prince Succumbs basically- to death pretty much. Yeah, he dies and there's no closure on whether or not he was able to reunite with this rose that he loved. And so she was really mad about that. And she was like, no, he has to be out there somewhere. What if he just grew up and he forgot what it was to be a child? And that's exactly what happens in that. Yeah. It, uh, it, that's exactly what well, she, she finds happens. She, was, she so... was upset particularly that there was no closure and that yes. the old man's like, well, I know because I can feel it. In She's like, heart. what do you mean you can feel it? That's, yeah. not, that's not conclusive. He's probably dead or... He, maybe he grew up if he isn't dead, and that's what annoyed her, is that the, that sh there was no concrete evidence right. to support. Yeah, and that's why I feel like there. this second half is, to me, obviously just a fever dream, because it goes in kind it's, of exactly the way own. she expects it to, up until the very end, where she realizes that... It's her own psyche <laughs> that effect. Even if something isn't really there, it can still be... You can still carry it with you. Yeah, you can still feel it. You can still have an attachment. She's, it. It, it's her way of accepting and learning how to deal with loss. loss. And I really like that. And even though I didn't like that second half of the movie very much, I, there were aspects of it that I liked. I did like kind of the way things played out with the, with the prince as a, a sucky adult. Overall, I liked the themes of the movie. I really liked that it had this juxtaposition of themes of really childish innocence and happiness and stuff like that, offsetting really darker, mature themes of death and loss. And I, I really liked that blend. I also really liked that they didn't just do a straight up adaptation of the book and that they kind of utilized The Little Prince as a story within the story in order to tell this character arc of the girl's acceptance of yeah. these things. I thought that was a really unique way of bringing that into it instead of like a straight up adaptation. The, yeah, I, I get that. Uh, for me, this film sort of felt like three movies that were put into one, or re really more appropriately two, because you had the second half feels like its own movie. The story of the girl and the old man feels like its own story. And then you have the little prince thrown in there too, which is an actual story. So for me, it felt a little bit jumbled. And while I, I like a lot of the elements, like you were saying, yeah. but I don't like how they were executed. Mm -hmm. It's like, I, I'm glad it has that merit, but it didn't go all the way for me. And I don't even like this movie that I'm going to compare it to, but I'm going to. It's I wouldn't actually like to see a structure like... Um, the never ending story where <laughs> it's a boy reading a book this is this is what i remember i haven't seen that movie in forever because it's terrible but uh this is three-year-old me talking by the way i never liked that movie but there's a boy reading a story and that story sort of parallels what that kid's going through and the never ending story part is the most interesting part of the movie you don't really want to read it or watch it for the boy reading its story but this was like the reverse, where the girl's story is the standout part, and you kind of want to see where that goes. And for me, it, I, I was split because I wanted to see where the girl's story went, but at the same time, it would be cut with parts of The Little Prince. Not that it would interrupt it, but sometimes I just wanted to keep going with it, and then yeah. I would have to get, all right, I gotta wait for them, they're gonna play, and then they're gonna read a little bit more of the story, and then blah blah blah. But overall it was it was a really interesting and definitely a movie that had a lot of thought and uh care put into it yeah it was an interesting movie and 
I kind of don't think it's memorable, but I don't think it's terrible. I'm, I, one, one thing I want to add before I end it, and I just thought of this before, uh, is that the little girl has this sort of, uh, I'm going to call it a snaggle tooth, but it's not exactly a snaggle tooth. So it's just sort of like a tooth that didn't grow right. And uh, I was kind of hoping they would play more with that. Do you know what I mean? Like, she has this tooth, and in the very beginning of the movie, they're practicing smiling, sitting up straight, what words to say. And she smiles, and the mom looks at her, and there's sort of like, you can see that she has a kind of a messed up tooth, and the mom's like, don't smile that much. So she closes her mouth a little bit. And I thought, oh, okay, that's a little bit of character right there. She's gonna be self-conscious about her tooth, or like, she doesn't get in because she's afraid of what she looks like, or blah blah blah. But they didn't play that up. And at the same time, I'm happy that they didn't, because that little thing gives her character. Right. I really liked that the mom was not straight up some, like, the evil, mom. horrible mother who didn't... Like, she legitimately really cared about she her daughter. She actually cared, yeah. E even though her way of showing it was really misplaced and really unhealthy. But, like, yeah. you know, the little girl comes home and she's like, Oh, I, I didn't finish all of my work today because I kind of made a friend. And I would have completely expected the mother in any other movie to be like, like you don't need you friends. don't need friends you can't have friends i can't friends believe you didn't do your bring work you down. but instead she was just like oh um i don't know where we can work time into your schedule for friends but we're gonna try so you can see them next august on tuesdays or something like that but i was like yeah. okay i was really happy and you know her relationship with the mother did develop and improve over the course of the movie. I was really yeah. happy to see that the mother actually legitimately cared about her kid. Yeah, it was pretty nice. And yeah. it's for certain points, it wasn't a standard... You didn't have these sort of tropey characters. Like the little girl having a tooth and me expecting that they'd talk about it. And they didn't. Oh, okay, that actually that's interesting in its own right. The mom being a single mom and for a long time not bringing up the fact that the dad's not there mm -hmm. it's like okay this is kind of they eventually do and i didn't the way they did it i didn't like but i like that they just accepted that you, you're sort of put in the movie it's like this is normal this is what this girl's life is and they're not gonna say whoa single mom what's going yeah. on like it's no this is how their life works and they seem to be getting on pretty well and the mom's successful and it's not a, it her focus on her trials and tribulations is not that the mom is not without a dad. It's just yeah. other stuff. Yeah. That's It's just these little things that give a little bit of character to it mm -hmm. that sort of represents better what, I guess, audiences are like nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, well, audiences always have been diverse, but that representation's not there. And that's what the... What I mentioned earlier, the Gina Davis Institute for Gender Representation and Media mm -hmm. is like this thing that she created to study how different groups of people are represented in film, whether it's a positive representation, whether it's a negative one, yeah. how much screen time so-and-so gets. And that's why Mark Osborne, the, the director, was like, uh, I was going to make it a film about a boy. And then I read these things and I, I realized every story like this is about a boy you know not that it's bad but there's not a lot of stories where it's about a girl and it's not necessarily saying this is a movie for the girls it's just that the main character is a girl good on you mark osborne it's not saying this is a movie for kids with single parents it just the character happens to have a single parent it's just yeah it's a more unique world that at the same time represents the audiences a little bit more roundedly i right. guess you'd call it like you know, not everyone has this, but you can get behind it still because it's not in your face. It's not like we're going to champion this movie for the little girls out there and then it falls on its face because it really doesn't do it. It's just, no, this character just happens to be this and that's, it doesn't matter that they're that, but in a way it does too in real life. Right. I appreciated it. I yeah. enjoyed the movie. Like the execution was pretty clunky, but I still cried a lot throughout it. And I think what I appreciated most about it was the symbolic value of kind of the structure and also for the fact that when you kind of go back and start thinking about it, you can piece a lot of it together. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I really appreciate that kind of movie. 
And yeah. you know, it, it made me interested in going and reading The Little Prince as yeah, a book I, uh, and see how that's different and see kind of how it is in its complete form. I already have it on my Amazon list. Oh, I'm nice. Like, I'm like, I gotta buy this. I gotta get this. I'm gonna read it with my mom and we're gonna have a good hug afterwards. And yeah, it's gonna be good. Then I can say, La Petite Prince. Yay! It's funny. I've always, I've, I won't say I've always known about The Little Prince, but I've, def I've seen him in different parodied in shows i think there's a futurama episode where they're like riding the space bicycles and they have to deliver newspapers and the little <laughs> prince is on an asteroid and they throw a newspaper at him and he's waving and it hits him and he just goes flying off into the abyss oh gosh and uh he's also he was prominently painted in my spanish classroom back in high school oh, cool. nice little asteroid and he's looking down at everyone and i'm like it's la petite prince babar too maybe we'll watch babar someday or babar as people call him i like to call him babar i haven't heard of that one He's an elephant. Really? I think he's also French. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. I think this was an interesting movie, but if you disagree or have something else to add, please leave a comment and let us know. If you think I went too hard on a little boy's voice acting uh, <laughs> chops, you know, leave a comment. If you liked what we said, subscribe or give a like. It would really help us out. We are the Discount Ramble Pants. And remember, you're our senior VP. Well, personally, you'll be you'll be my little prince. Oh. All right. That does it for us. Thanks Goodbye. for listening. Thank you. Uh...